Welcome back to another video of RW Outdoors. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to clean the carburetor on an old four horse Evinrude or Johnson outboard. Now this particular motor I have here is a 1973 Evinrude four horse yacht twin. Now the same procedure will be the same from motors all the way back to the 60s to the mid 80s. Now these old four horse motors were basically the same either the light twin or yacht twin. They just had different lower units, but the power head's all the same and the carburetor's the same procedure to clean. Well, I'm gonna tell you already, I'm not gonna go ahead and put all new components in the carburetor. Now, if I were to keep this motor for myself, I would go ahead and put all new OEM parts into it. I'm trying to sell these motors to the common man that doesn't have $400 to spend on a boat motor to take his family fishing. I still wanna be able to get people out there at an affordable price and know that they won't break down and they have a good running motor. A lot of these carburetors have not had to replace any gaskets or seals. It's a good idea too if they're rotten or make them yourself. But most carburetors I've cleaned, all I've had to do was take it apart and just clean it and run like brand new. This motor here, if I were to replace everything with OEM parts, this would be a $400 motor. But with it running and ready to use, I would only want to get $200 out of it. To so the common man, something that's only $200 to get their family out fishing is a lot better of a deal than $400. Now for the guy that likes collecting these, go ahead and spend all the money. My goal here is just to get people out and have a good running motor to take their family out fishing. I also enjoy spending time working on these old outboards so my time isn't really too valuable. I do make some money on this motor. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try to sell this motor for $200 when it's all said and done. I've sold many of these old four horses for the $200 range. Just by doing simple things, these things will run like brand new and you don't need to go ahead and replace all the, all the OEM parts. Now some of the things you'll need for this project on cleaning a carburetor is you'll need a wrench, you'll need a flathead screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, some carb spray, you want, a, you want some compressed air with a small nozzle, you'll also want a semi-clean bin that you can clean your parts in. Well, I'm going to pop this hood open here and I'll show you the steps to get to the carburetor. Well, obviously here toward the front of your motor is your carburetor. One of the first things you want to do is just pull your low speed adjustment knob off along with your high speed. And we'll have to get the choke lever off. This is where you can take some needle nose pliers and make sure you don't lose these small parts. You can see this little pin there. Now there's a little pin that will come out, just like that, and now your choke lever is disassembled and you can pull it out. Next up we'll have to remove the gas line, which is this black hose right here. And they usually just have a little clip that pinches the gas line or sometimes a hose clamp. You'll want to make sure that is backed off the bar of the carburetor quite a ways, like you can see here. And I'll take my needle nose pliers and pull the gas line off the carburetor. Just like so. For some reason, if you get a crack in your gas line from pulling this gas line off the barb, I'll just go ahead and replace it. Gas line is cheap. Everything there is disconnected from the carburetor except for the two bolts that are holding it on. You can see here I have a custom 7 16 inch wrench and it's cut a little short and this makes this job easy. We have to remove this nut here along with this one here. Once it gets loose enough you can loosen it by hand. Uh, it does look like to get this nut off we will have to remove this carburetor armature plate which is just a flathead screw right here. And it'll just pull off then you can pull this little piece of plastic off from the little linkage there. One thing on this four horse model, you want to make sure this little plastic piece is not worn too badly. And you can see here, mine's got a little groove, but if they're any worse, then I'd recommend replacing it because that'll mess up your whole timing. Now we can actually remove this other 7 16 inch nut. Another thing I didn't mention on this motor, you'll have to unscrew your high speed adjustment needle. And it'll just loosen by hand. Looks like you'll have to remove the slow speed as well. Now the carburetor should be able to pull right out. Just like so. 
Now I did have to remove this piece here from the high speed jet so that way I could get it off the motor because otherwise I didn't want to fit in between the hood. Now one thing I like to do when I have these carburetors off is clean some of the rubbish on the bottom of the motor. So by doing that you want to cover your intake, take a dry rag and just get some of this rubbish off. That's better than how it was. Now you will notice when you take your car off there was the gasket that was on the back side that separated the carburetor from the engine. I'm going to take that off and you want to inspect that to make sure it has no cracks. And mine looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the engine. Now I did mention that after I took the high speed jet out I had to take this piece out to get the carb off but you might not need to because I tried putting it back on and back off and I just didn't wiggle it in the right direction. So it might not be a necessary thing. To remove them, you can take your 7 16 inch wrench and just loosen them up. Next up, we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver and remove the five screws that hold the bowl of the carburetor on. One here, one here, one here, one here, and the last one here. Now all the screws are removed, you should be able to separate the two halves of the carburetor. Now the bowl doesn't look too bad, I've seen worse. You see here's the old cork float. A lot of people say you need to replace these with the aftermarket plastic ones, but in my opinion, if it's all still in one piece, keep it going. Now you can remove the bowl gasket. You want to inspect this to make sure there's no cracks or tears and it looks good. Next up, take a pointy object and remove the pin that holds the float on. Push it out and then you can take it out the rest of the way by your hands. Just like so. And now your float with your needle should be able to pop up. Just like that. There's your needle. And we'll remove that from the float. Next up, remove this cork gasket here that was on the main jet. Now a lot of times I see these really disintegrated and they really do need replaced. And I'll just replace them with an O-ring because that, that's what comes in the new kits. And you can see here, this one's actually starting to disintegrate here. If any of these little pieces get stuck in a needle then your whole motor's not gonna run right. Next, I'm gonna take the seat out. And next, the main jet. You'll see a lot of times on other videos, people remove these Welsh plugs, which are these shiny plugs here in the carburetor. And those will help you blow out the idle circuit better. But I've never had to take any apart and every one I've done ran perfectly after a good cleaning. The whole carburetor is taken apart and now we're going to start the cleaning process. I'm going to take some carb cleaner and just spray in some of the orifices and jets. Now the next part is pretty important. What I have here is a little piece of wire that is in this to clean out the jets. Just poke it in the little holes. Alrighty, next up we're going to take some of our compressed air and blow into the orifices that we sprayed carb spray into. Now I'm going to start reassembling the carburetor. Now 
I was always told when you do these carbs, you want the top of the float to be parallel with the top of your carburetor here. Mine looks dead on. To do a quick test to make sure your needle's not sticking, flip your carb upside down. And it looks like it's working properly. And we'll go ahead and put our gasket back on. Now another way to test out the functionality of your carburetor needle, if you tip it up like that where it's how it's mounted and you blow into the gas inlet, you can hear the air. And then when you start to tip it, you can hear the needle shut off. That's another tip for you. Now another thing I didn't mention is make sure you clean the tips of your carburetor needles. Alrighty, now we can put our packing nuts back on. You don't want to torque them all down quite yet. Now this carburetor's put back together and all clean, we'll put it back on the motor. Your base gasket on there, and we'll slide the carb on. Four horse model is a little tricky to get the carb on and off because it's kind of a tight space, but it's doable with a little patience. Just like that, we got it slid on. Get the nuts hand tightened at first. Take your wrench and torque them up. If you're like me, you'll drop this little screw for the throttle plate about 37.7 times. That looks good. We'll hook our choke lever back up. Got the pin back on for the choke. If you're not familiar with these old outboards, the top one's for your slow speed mixture and the bottom is for your high speed mixture. And we'll go ahead and thread the slow speed in first. Thread it all the way in until it feels like there's resistance and then stop. We're gonna thread in the high speed Turn it in all the way until there's resistance. Both needles are turned all the way in until there's resistance. Now the default settings for these is the slow speed needs to be one and a half turns out and the bottom needs to be one turn out. Now our carb is all reassembled and cleaned. We're gonna see how well this runs. Well, it seems to be running pretty good. It's amazing what a little carb clean can do. I hope you enjoyed this how-to video. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.